Shalom. Giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachach, Double honors to the apostles, the bishops, and the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations, as always, to the elect. And I wanted to get into Psalms 138 and verse 2, which is a scripture being used all right, by a particular camp to say that the name of the Most High is not important all right, or that we don't know it. When you read Psalms 138, all right, um, this is a thanksgiving all right, of the Lord's favor. Okay, which the favor is bestowed upon the elect of the nation of Israel. This is a psalm of King David. It says, I will praise thee with my whole heart, which we know the Hebrew word for heart. Okay. Is lab, which is really speaking of your inward man, inner man. All right. Your mind, your spirit. Okay. So it says here, I will praise thee with my whole mind. Before the gods will I sing praise unto thee. All right, before all of these particular gods that are, you know, uh, praised and worshipped in this world. Okay, we are worshipping Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, as the uh, prophet Isaiah says. All right. Let's see here. Of the Lord's have dominion over us. I believe it's Isaiah 26. It's the book of Isaiah 26 and 13. It says, O Yahweh, our power, other lords besides thee have had dominion over us, but by thee only will we make mention of thy name. All right, and the word mention is tied to a memorial. Okay, remembrance, all right? Only we, all right, uh, the Israelites, the elect, all right, will make mention of thy name. The word mention is zakar, to remember, to call to mind, to be brought into remembrance, all right? So as the apostles, the bishops, the elders, the prophets go out on the highways, we're putting you in remembrance of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, amongst all of these various different gods that this world bow to, all right, we're making mention and putting our people in remembrance of the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. So it says in verse 2 in Psalms 138, now this is the scripture used by the IUIC to say, we don't know the name, the name doesn't matter. It says, I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy love kindness and for thy truth for thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name okay now the way that they're breaking this down is that he's put his word above his name the name itself doesn't matter we don't know the name it's all about the word the law all right which is complete madness the scriptures in the law tell you take not the name of the lord in vain that's one of the laws but they boast in the law Okay, the, the, the law tells you to make no mention of the name of other gods. All right, and we showed you the, the you know, the uh, word for mention in that scripture is to bring into remembrance. So when you're calling on Jesus Christ, when you're calling on these other gods, all right, you're, you're putting our people, all right, in remembrance of idols. You see, but the way that this is written, it says, for thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. All right. Let's NLT it. It says, I I bow before your holy temple as I worship. I praise your name for your unfailing love and faithfulness. What name is he praising? It says, for your promises are backed by the all the honor of your name. Your promises are backed by all of the honor of your name, man. So this is, all right, basically saying what this scripture is saying is that ultimately his word will come to pass because he promised all right, and swore on himself, all right, basically, as it says, I do not these things for you, but for my name's sake, let's get that real quick, I believe, in the book of Ezekiel, okay, these prophecies are coming to pass, all right, 
to bring glory to his name. Okay? Because if they don't, ultimately it would give him a bad reputation, right? Let's see if I can find that. I mean, it's so, so many scriptures that go into it, but the one I'm thinking of is, is in Ezekiel, the 36th chapter and the 22nd verse. It says, Therefore say unto the house of Israel, saith the Lord God, I do not this for your sake, O house of Israel, but for my holy name's sake, which ye have profaned among the heathen, all right, whether ye went. So he left the remnant amongst the nation of Israel to be holy, so that we can be brought back to him in sincerity and truth and be pure so that his name is not tainted because he's promised Abraham that I'm going to make this people holy, that they're going to have this land. You see, and if that wasn't to happen, all right, that would then mean ultimately his reputation had a stain. His word is not sincere. So when he said he puts his word above his name, ultimately the promises are backed. All right, by his name, as we'll show you, when he swore to Abram, he swore on himself that his descendants will receive of their land and that that promise will be fulfilled. All right, Ezekiel 36 and 22 NLT, therefore give the people of Israel this message from the sovereign Lord. I am bringing you back, but not because you deserve it. I am doing it to protect my holy name. See, on which you brought shame while you were scattered among these nations. Okay? And I will show how holy my great name is. As the scriptures say in the book of uh, Hebrews 11, he that cometh to the most high must believe that he is. Let's get that real quick. In the book of Hebrews, the 11th chapter, all right, in the 6th verse, it says, but without faith it is impossible to believe him, for he all right, that cometh to the Most High must believe that he is. See, he is, in the Hebrew is Yahweh, and that he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. You see, you must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. Okay? So again, it says in Ezekiel 36 and 23, I will show how holy my great name is, the name which you brought shame on among the nations, and I will, and when I will reveal my holiness through you before their eyes, saith Yahweh, when we are ultimately purified, okay, gathered from among all the nations, that ultimately fulfills what he promised. So therefore he puts his word above his name in a sense that his promises are backed by the honor of his name. As a matter of fact, when you get the book of, uh, let's get, uh, it was a Hebrew six. All right. Um, the book of Hebrews, the sixth chapter, right. And let's jump down. We'll go here to verse six, uh, Hebrew six and 13. It says God's promise promises bring hope. Okay, it says, for when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swear by himself, NLT. For example, there was God's promise to Abraham. Since he was, uh, there was no one greater to swear by, God took an oath in his own name saying, I will certainly bless you and multiply your descendants beyond number see ultimately he swore on himself you see and if that never comes to pass that will bring a stain to his name okay so his promises are backed by his holy name okay as you keep reading it says um then abraham wait patiently and receive what god had promised now, when the people take an oath, they call on someone greater to hold themselves to it. And without question, that oath is binding. God also bound himself with an oath so that those who receive the promise can perfectly can be perfectly sure that he would never change his mind. 
Okay, that's the immutability of his counsel. When you read in the King James, it says, wherein the most high more abundantly to show unto the heirs of the promise, which are the, the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the immutability of his counsel confirmed it by an oath. He confirmed it by an oath, man. He promised Abram. Okay. And you can get that. You can go into the scriptures, man. He, pro he, he promised Abram. Okay. Genesis 26 and 28. And they said, we, cer we saw certainly that the Lord was with thee. All right, yada, yada, yada. Then an oath of the Lord will be put uh, between them both. All right, but when you go into the scriptures, you read about the uh, the, the uh, oath swore unto our fathers. All right, as a matter of fact, let's see if I can. And it's immutable. It's unchanging. Okay. Let's see here. Yep. Jeremiah 11 and 5, that I may perform the oath which I have sworn unto your fathers to give them the land flowing with milk and honey unto this day. Then answered I and said, so be it, Yahweh. And that promise is going to be fulfilled, which is why the remnant is being raised up. Okay. But ultimately, the immutability of his counsel was confirmed by an oath that he would never change his mind. Okay. Hebrews 6 and 18 in the uh, NLT, it says, So God has given both his promise and oath. These two things are unchangeable because it is impossible for the Most High to lie. Therefore, all right, we who have fled to him for refuge can have confidence as we hold to the hope that lies before us. Okay, because we, we know that he's not going to allow his name, all right, to receive a bad reputation by us not receiving of those promises. As goes all of the scriptures. That's why it says in the book of Isaiah 55. Let's get that real quick. Isaiah the 55th chapter. In the 11th verse it says. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. But it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper. In the thing whereunto I sent it. So his, he's. He's. He's not into empty talk, empty promises. That's something that men do. Men and women do that. All right. But when it comes to the most high, all right, his holy name establishes his promise. Okay. And that's the name we have hope in that he is. He is a rewarder to those that patiently seek him. Yahweh. Okay. So the, 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 the heavenly father's word. As we read here in Matthew 24 and 35, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away as the scripture cannot be broken. All right. The scripture cannot be broken, man. Okay. So that's what it means. I mean, there's other scriptures I can get, but I don't want to take too long on this because this is a silly breakdown to the scripture. Here it is. You go to Psalms 138 and 2 when somebody's talking about the name and says, well, well, he magnified his word above his name. Well, even if that's your breakdown, doesn't he have a name? Okay, him magnifying his word above his name, although it's written like that, what it's basically saying is that his promises are backed by the honor of his name. And there's different translations, okay, that, that go into it the right way. Okay? Let's see here. Yeah, this one says, for you have exalted your name and your word above all. Let's see here. There's another one. NIV, I will bow down towards your holy temple and I will praise your name for your unfailing love and for your faithfulness. For you have so exalted your solemn decree that it uh, surpassed your fame okay so the solemn decrees all right which are fulfilled in the prophecies okay the, 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 we're gonna know that he is by those things coming to pass which gives glory to his name okay what, what, what the hell are these guys talking about man 
This isn't saying the name doesn't matter. Why would you say that? Okay? You have exalted your name and your promises above everything else. That's all that's saying, man. You have magnified your word according to all your name. That he is. Okay? See what the precepts link to. It's very simple. It's not super deep. Let's see here. Psalms 56 and 10. And God will I praise in his word. And Yahweh will I praise in his word. Okay. There you go. Heaven and earth. All are going to be fulfilled, man. All of these things that are written in the scriptures is going to be fulfilled. And if it wasn't. Again, that would give him a terrible reputation. Okay, he's not into uh, uh, tainting his reputation by these prophecies not coming to pass. Okay? Niggas will just say anything that, that sounds good at the moment to make you feel good. But no, these words aren't empty that we're reading in the Holy Scriptures. Psalms 106 and 8. Nevertheless, he saved them for his holy name's sake. That he might make his mighty power to be known. Okay. There you go. Ezekiel 36 and 32. Not for your sakes do I this, said the Lord God. Be it known unto you. Be ashamed and confounded for your own ways, O house of Israel. So I'm not doing this, all right, ultimately for you. But because ultimately my name is tied into this investment. My name is tied into these promises. You see what I'm saying? So we know that he is, all right, by, all right, these words coming to pass, man. Because the scriptures tell you to praise his name. Let's get Psalms 113 and 2. Blessed be the name of Yahweh, all right, from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, Yahweh's name is to be praised so he has a name okay <laughs> and he differs from his only begotten son all right in the new testament all right in the old testament all right it's clear that there is a father and a son this is why the scriptures say what is his name and what is his son's name if thou can tell all right so the understanding of this scripture all right as you keep reading okay is that his promises are backed, all right, by his name. He swore on himself when he promised Abram that we will receive, all right, he and, 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 and his seed will receive that land. And why do you think a remnant has been raised up? To be heirs to that promise, okay? Psalms 138 and 3, In the day when I cried, thou answered me, and strengthens me with my strength, uh, with with uh, with strength in my soul. So there you go. All right, that's all that means, man. That doesn't mean that his word, all right, is more important than his name. That doesn't mean he's put his word above his name, so we don't have to worry about the name. That is not what that is talking about. Okay. Again, NLT. I will bow before your holy temple as I worship. I praise your name for your unfailing love and faithfulness. Your promises are backed by all the honor of your name. He is. Okay. So when you read these promises, you best believe that he is. All right. And he swore on himself. And again, if these things don't come to pass, it will put a stain in his reputation. And the heavenly father is not a nigger. Okay. To where he's going to just say something, all right, and it's not going to come to pass. All right, that's that's a that's an earthly, earth man problem, okay? The most high God, all right, doesn't have that problem. His word is faithful and his word is fulfilled in his only begotten son, which comes in the volume of the book, okay? His will will be done through his only begotten son, all right, who is his word, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, Shalom.